One thing that both the Ukraine war and now the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is teaching us is that we must be wary of journalists' reports. We can't take anything that is presented to us as news without checking the sources for ourselves and also considering who is giving the information. We are now on the 11th of October, so that's merely four days after the Hamas invasion into Israel that shocked the world and more specifically, shocked the Israeli Defense Forces who seemed to be unprepared and in total disarray in the first two to three days. But we are already seeing unsubstantiated reports coming particularly from Israel and its allies in the West about the alleged barbaric acts done by the Hamas when they entered Israel on October 7th. A lot of things I can't report right now because of operational security, but things are very, very bad along the Gaza border. Small arms fire, continued rocket fire into southern and central Israel. Soldiers doing what they can to hold lines around here, but it is a very, very bad situation. One of particular concern is the story that has been running wild on social media and in the Western media that Hamas fighters beheaded 40 babies in the Kafar Azar region in an Israeli community that was attacked by Hamas. It all started, ironically, with an Israeli news agency called I-24, and specifically, the news correspondent, Ms. Nicole Zedek. So here's the article from I-24, and it reads, Soldiers encounter unimaginable horrors as they remove the bodies of victims including about 40 babies and small children, some with their heads chopped off. Said Ms. Nicole Zedek, the I-24 news correspondent was on the ground and clearly decided to report hasty statements about Israeli soldiers claiming that they were babies with their heads cut off. Have a look for yourself. And explain exactly just the mass casualties that happened right here. In fact, the Israeli military says they still don't have a clear number, but I'm talking to some of the soldiers and they say what they've witnessed as they've been walking through these different houses, these different communities, uh, babies, their heads cut off, babies, their heads cut off. That's what they said. Gunned down, families completely gunned down in their beds. As you can see for yourself, at no time during her report did she try to see the bodies herself or verify, nor did she question the soldier about what she saw and where those beheaded babies were located. On her Twitter page, she again confirmed the hearsay news in a tweet stating that a soldier told her that they believe 40 children were killed. No mention, however, was made of any beheadings. Fox News then ran with the hearsay report in this report, also widely circulated on social media. Also uh, getting some horrific uh, images uh, coming from Israeli television. A reporter in the kibbutz, uh, Kafir Azar, uh, said the commander, the Israeli commander who liberated it from Hamas, says they found the bodies of 40 babies um, and some of them with their heads uh, cut off. Numerous Twitter channels have republished the news as if it were confirmed and accurate. This is important because these unverified atrocities are a key factor in shaping world opinion and justifying the brutal retaliation by the much stronger Israeli forces <laughs> who have been ordered by the Israeli Defense Minister to lay siege to Gaza, cutting off water, fuel and electricity. <laughs> And this is especially alarming considering that under international human rights law, such a siege is prohibited according to UN human rights 
spokesperson. Of sieges that endangered the lives of civilians by depriving them of goods essential for their survival is prohibited under international humanitarian law. Any restriction on the movement of people and goods to implement a siege must be justified by military necessity or it may amount to collective punishment. But it turns out that the errors are coming out of this claim of 40 beheaded babies may not even be true. Andalou Agency, a Turkish media outlet, reported today that the Israeli army says it does not have confirmation about allegations that Hamas beheaded babies. The article says that when Andalou contacted the Israeli army spokesperson unit over the phone and asked about the allegations, she said, and I quote, we have seen the news, but we do not have any details or confirmation about that. al Mayadeen, a Middle Eastern news outlet, picked up on the story as well, stating in a report that the I-24 news correspondent, the said Ms. Nicole Zeldek, did not present any evidence on what she was claiming, nor did she present a reliable source, as the source itself, which is Israeli soldiers, did not actually admit to seeing the alleged massacre. The report continues, thus what Zeldek presented as a given fact was mere hearsay, propagated with the absolute intention to condemn the Palestinian resistance and justify the brutal aggression on the Gaza Strip. This misleading reporting is very similar to what we saw in the Ukraine war the most dangerous report came from Associated Press News when they falsely reported that the missile that struck Poland in November last year was fired by Russia when in truth it was fired by Ukraine. The Associated Press in an article claimed that they had to fire the reporter and then reviewed their standards on use of anonymous sourcing following what they called an egregious error in a story about a fatal missile strike that killed two people in Poland. And here's what the article said. The initial report was attributed to a senior US intelligence official with no explanation of why the person was granted anonymity. A reason for anonymity is required by AP Associated Press policy. It says that the policy of Associated Press is to try to avoid confidential sources and that a reporter must get approval from a news manager who is told the source's identity in order to use it in a story and this process is called vetting sources. Associated Press policy also calls for a second source to corroborate information received through confidential sources although exceptions are granted on a case-by-case Basis. So if these standards were applied to I-24, I ask you, should Ms. Zeldek be similarly dismissed if it is eventually confirmed that no such massacre took place? But even Sky News Australia is doubting Ms. Zeldek's story. Um, the Metro, The Times, The Telegraph, leading on these reports from Kafar Azar. We saw our correspondent Stuart Ramsey's report from there. Um, it, it seems to have come from one Israeli journalist who said that she was told by soldiers there that 40 babies had died and some of them had been beheaded. Yes. Truly horrifying. Um, we have not seen the evidence of that. We have asked uh, the Israeli Defence Forces, the IDF, three times to confirm those numbers. They have not yet. Doesn't mean it didn't happen, but we saw a body bag with one child in it today when we were at Kafazar with this facility by the Israeli army. Yes, and I think it's important to recognise that emotions are very high at this point. And uh, you, you are looking at uh, women and children who have been murdered in this situation. That is undeniable. I think that there is an issue around the verification of this particular sentiment, which in itself is so horrifying. Um, it could, it, it, it forces the emotions. I think when I read this, you know, I, I assumed that it was true, that it wasn't uh, contended at all. Uh, and the, the horror that you feel when you think that this is potentially something that's happened is enormous. So it is very important 
important to have the verification of something like this. And if you look down um, on the metro here that you have up there, they've, they've put it in uh, quotation marks and they've talked about the Israeli claim of 40 babies having been beheaded. And if you look down some of the other papers, so the Telegraph, for example, they say that the Telegraph could not verify the claim. And then the Middle East Eye interviewed one of the Israeli women who were attacked by Hamas. And she tells a totally different story of how the events unfolded. הם נכנסים, ואני אומרת להם, יש לי פה שני ילדים. הדבר הראשון שאני אומרת להם... בעברית? לא, באנגלית. הם מסתכלים, ואז אחד אומר לי באנגלית, אל תדאגי, אני מוסלמי, אנחנו לא נפגע בכם. זה תפס אותי ב... מצד אחד בהפתעה, מצד שני זה הוריד לי הרבה לחץ. וישבתי עם הילדים שלי, והמחבלים אה, הביאו כיסא מהפינת אוכל. היה אה, מחבל חמוש כל הזמן, ניתנו בו ממ"ד, והשאר מסתובבים בבית. אחד מהם רואה על השיש בננות, אומר לי, אפשר לאכול אחת? אמרתי <laughs> לו, כן, אתה יכול לאכול אחת. מה הילדים אומרים? הגדול קצת יותר נלחץ, הקטנה לא ממש הזיז לה, <laughs> הייתה עסוקה בטאבלט שלה. הם היו אצלי בערך שעתיים. <laughs> בסוף השעתיים האלה אחד מהם סוגר לי את דלת הממ"ד והם יוצאים. I have presented numerous videos that shows how Western media has misled the public and at times downright lied about the causes of this war and the events occurring during this war. And I submit that we are going to see the very same lies in this Israeli-Palestine conflict. Try very hard to extract from people like me, from DiEM25, a condemnation of the attack by the Hamas guerrillas. Uh, we'll never get it. And they will never get it for a very simple reason. Those who care about humans without any discrimination, those who care equally about a Jew and an Arab, I must ask themselves a very simple question. What exactly is their idea of the cessation of hostilities? That Palestinians are going to lay down their arms and go back to, into the largest open-air prison in the world, where they are constantly suffocated by the apartheid state, 